Over the past 18 months, REITs have seen their share prices crash even as their dividend income kept on increasing. As a result, REIT dividend yields are now historically high with some high quality REITs yielding as much as 8%. And that's not all. I would add here that REIT payout ratios are historically low, REIT balance sheets are the strongest they've ever been and the rents of REITs also keep on growing at a solid pace. Therefore, I think that these 8% dividend yields are sustainable in most cases because they are backed by strong underlying businesses. Earning such high and sustainable dividend yields is very compelling in my opinion because it makes you less dependent on the public capital market and it also means that you only need about 2% of annual growth and price appreciation to reach double digit total returns. But today there are many such opportunities in the REIT market and so which one are the best to buy today? Hey everyone, this is Yossi, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about two high yielding REITs that we've been buying lately at High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter. In case you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, feel free to join us for a two week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. So the first REIT I want to discuss here is called EPR Properties. Its ticker symbol is EPR, and it's today offering a 7.5% dividend yield. EPR is a net lease Treat just like realty income. In case you're not familiar with net lease properties, these are single tenant, freestanding, typically service oriented properties such as Walgreens pharmacies, Taco Bell fast food restaurants, or even dollar stores. During my private equity days, these were some of my favorite property investments because their leases are typically structured in a way that's very favorable to the landlord. Typically, the lease term is really long at 10 to 15 years, and then they include several five year extensions which results in very predictable cash flow. Then secondly the leases typically include pre-agreed rent increases of 1 to 2 percent each year which may not seem high to you but because these increases are so consistent and happening every year it really adds up over time. And then a third element about these leases that I really like is that the tenant will be typically responsible for all the property expenses including even the maintenance of the property and this is why we call this triple net leases. And so because these leases are so strong, the cash flows of these properties tend to be very defensive and not surprisingly the market tends to price the net lease rates at fairly high valuations and low dividend yields. But EPO properties is an exception here. It's today priced at an 8% dividend yield and that's despite having a low 75% payout ratio and enjoying strong cash flow growth. So why is it priced at such a high yield today? I suspect that this is because EPR is focused focusing on a niche segment of the net lease market that's perceived to be quite a bit riskier and those are experimental properties. It owns mainly movie theaters, golf complexes, amusement parks, ski resorts, or even hot springs. It is true that these properties on an individual basis can be quite a bit riskier than your traditional net lease properties such as dollar stores because if you lose your tenant at the water park as an example, it may be quite a bit harder to release it to another company. If you lose the tenant of your Walgreens pharmacy, you may be able to reconfigure the property a bit and release it to a completely different business, but this simply isn't easy doable with a water park or a golf complex. But EPR isn't taking these risks without being compensated for them. Typically it's able to get higher initial cap rates, greater annual rent escalations, longer lease terms and also better protection from its tenants in the form of master leases and corporate guarantees. This then results in higher returns and EPR is able to nicely mitigate the risks of individual properties by including them as part of a well-diversified portfolio. The best proof that this strategy is working is to go back to 1997 when the company went public and to look at its track record. EPR has not just outperformed, it's actually been one of the most rewarding REITs of all time. Today it keeps executing the same exact strategy that worked so well in the past. The experienced economy is outperforming the broader economy as increasingly many people prefer to spend on experiences over things. This is especially true for millennials and the Gen Z generation and despite that EPR is today heavily discounted by the market. The share price of the company is still today about 40% below that of its pre-COVID period. I suspect that what may have happened here is that the market has failed to recognize that the pandemic was just a temporary crisis to the company and by now its cash flow has nicely recovered, the health of its tenant has also improved and now the box office of movie theaters is even 
even recovering, I'm sure you've seen recent headlines of the successes of Barbie and Oppenheimer. Therefore, I believe that this is a market opportunity and I'm buying it. The market sentiment of the company is still affected by the pandemic, but in reality, this was a temporary crisis and the fundamentals of the company have now nicely recovered. For 2023, the company is guiding 9% FFO per share growth, which is one of the highest growth rates in the entire Netly sector. And so what I really like about EPR is that it combines high yield with high growth. And so this gives you good prospects for strong total returns in the coming years. In my base case scenario, we're going to see a continued recovery in the box office of movie theaters in the coming years. This is going to reduce the concern of most market participants. And it's also going to lead to an expansion of EPR's valuation multiple, leading to up to 50% upside potential in addition to its yield and its growth. Naturally, you don't get to enjoy such high expected returns without taking some risks. And if PR has clearly some risks in here, but I think that they are more than priced in. Before I go into the second company, could you please do me a huge favor and like this video? It really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support. Then the second read that I want to discuss is called Healthcare Realty, ticker symbol HR. Its dividend yield is today 7.6%. This is the leading medical office building REIT. It owns large clusters in some of the fastest growing markets of the nation. These are real class A properties I'll put here on the screen a map of their market exposure. You'll see there that these are some of the very desirable markets today. And now I'll put also another chart showing the demographics of its properties. You will see that those of HR are better than those of most of its peers. But despite that, the company has seen its share price perform really poorly in the coming years as it has been cut in half, which would imply that it's going through a severe crisis, which in my opinion really isn't the case. I think that the market is really worrying about two things things here. Firstly, it's worrying about the lack of growth in recent years. And secondly, it's also worrying about the leverage, which is a bit above average for rate. But the very important thing here that the market appears to have missed is that this is now changing rapidly. The management believes that its FFO per share is going to grow by 5 to 7% in 2024, as well as in 2025. Here is a recent statement that they made on a conference call. We see a clear path to generating FFO per share growth of 5 to 7% in 2024. This potential is bolstered by long-term rising demand for healthcare services and health systems are reporting that demand for outpatient services is accelerating. We also see near-term tailwinds that could strengthen growth outlook, including market expectations for softening inflation and lower short-term interest rates in the month ahead. These tailwinds align well with healthcare realties post-merger strategic initiatives. So the growth is now going to accelerate and the market appears to have missed this. Moreover, the leverage is now also expected to come down. Today, their LTV is already below 40%, which is quite conservative, but their debt to EBITDA ratio is a bit above average at 6.6 .6 times. The reason why it's so high is because medical office buildings typically trade at low cap rates. I don't really think that the leverage is a big issue here. When you own defensive class A properties, you can handle a bit more leverage than average and healthcare realty has done a good job at extending its debt's maturities Currently, it has no maturities left for 2023, none for 2024, and its maturities in 2025 are very small and manageable. But in any case, the market doesn't seem to like it, and so the management has decided to deliverage further, given that we are now in a rising interest rate environment. The nice thing here is that Healthcare Realty can achieve this deleveraging organically because it's now experiencing strong organic growth. Here is another interesting statement that the management made on their recent conference call. Above average same store NOI growth moving into 2024 will also help to drive leverage lower. As a rule of thumb, every 1% growth in same store NOI reduces debt to EBITDA by over 5 basis points. For example, 5% NOI growth next year will reduce leverage by over a quarter of a turn. So in short, here you have a high quality REIT that owns very desirable and defensive properties, but it's priced at a low valuation because it has not grown in the recent years and it has a bit too much leverage. However, this is now going to change. Its growth is going to accelerate in the coming years and its leverage 
is also going to come down. I think that this is going to serve as a strong catalyst that will lead to upside as the market sentiment for the company improves. Today, we estimate that the company is priced at a 35% discount to its net asset value. It offers a near 8% dividend yield, and that's with a fairly conservative payout ratio. I would add that there is pretty strong evidence that our NAV estimate is here quite reasonable because Well Tower, one of the very big healthcare rates, actually offered to buy out healthcare realty for $31 not too long ago. Moreover, the board of directors of Healthcare Realty recently instated a 500 million share buyback plan, noting that their share price is today overly discounted relative to the value of their properties. And then on top of that, some insiders also have made some purchases in the open market. So to recap here, high dividend yield, growth accelerating, leverage coming down, those should serve as a strong catalyst to attract investors. And so I think that as it closes the gap to its NAV, we could see 30 to 50% upside potential from here. That's a bit less than EPR, but this is also a safer rate. Now, if you want to access all my other high yielding REIT holdings, feel free to join High Yield Landlord for a two week free trial. This is my REIT newsletter that's hosted on Seeking Alpha. This is a real free trial, meaning that you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days. So if you want to come just for the free trial and then cancel, that's perfect perfectly fine with me and otherwise once more if you could like this video that would really help me a lot to grow this channel thank you so much for all your support and see you at my next one bye bye